Hi guys, welcome to another video or if you're newer, welcome. I'm Carl from Carlos Ceramics and in today's video I will be showing you how to make a mini mug on a mini polish wheel. In the past I've also made a video on how to make a mini vase on a mini polish wheel and on the beginning of that video I showed my mini wheel a little bit more so if you'd like you can check the video out. But for now we're just getting started with throwing the mini mug. I started with taking a little bit of water and I placed this on top of the wheel and then I pressed the clay on top of the wheel as well. The water helps to let the clay stick to the wheel so that it doesn't fly off. And just like this I mold it a little bit and press it on the wheel. And as you can see when I spin the wheel the clay is still stuck and doesn't fly away. Then I start centering the clay. Centering means that you press the clay towards the middle of the wheel and I do this by holding my fingers around it and pressing the clay to the middle. Since I put quite some pressure on the wheel, the wheel starts to turn a little bit slower and that's why I put it at a higher speed than I actually need because it's going to turn slower because of the pressure I put on top of it. And as you can see I try to hold my hand still so that the clay gets into the middle and becomes centered. When you first do this it might take some time before you figure out how this works but the more often you do it the easier it gets. And it's important to keep your hands wet because this helps with centering because otherwise the clay might stick to your hand. And as you can see here the clay is now centered since you almost don't see it moving. On the top there's a little bit of slip but the clay itself is nice and centered. Then I use my little finger to open up the clay so I wet it and then I press it slowly onto the middle of the clay. And as you can see my finger cuts off a little bit of clay this is because of my nail but this isn't really a problem. And just like that I press my finger deeper and deeper into the clay and I make the bottom quite thin but don't push too far because you don't want to touch the wheel otherwise your mug won't have a bottom in the end which is not very nice. <laughs> then I start pulling up the walls. I do this by holding my left index finger in the clay and then I press with my right hand towards my left hand on the inside while making a slow upwards movement. I also let the wheel spin a little bit slower doing this than when I did with the centering part. And as you can see I just move my hands very slowly and I repeat this multiple times so that the sides become higher and the clay becomes thinner. Here the mug became a little bit too wide and to fix this I wet both of my hands and then carefully hold them on the outside of the mug and then I move them slowly towards each other. And as you can see now the mug is straight again. And then I press some more clay towards the top. As you can see the top isn't very centered anymore so what I do to fix this is I take my needle tool Hold my left hand on the inside and press with the needle against my finger to cut off a little bit of clay at the top so that the rim becomes nice and straight. And then I take this wooden tool. This tool came with the wheel that I bought but if you don't have this you could also use the needle tool that we used before. And I use this to cut away a little bit of clay at the bottom. So as you can see I hold it tilted and carefully press it into the clay at the bottom to give the cup a little bit of a round shape. Then I take my sponge to smooth out the cup and I also want to change the shape a little bit. I did this by pressing the sponge towards the cup very carefully and I press a little bit inwards. You almost don't see it but I just change the shape a little bit to make the bottom part a little bit more round and the top part a little bit more inwards if that makes sense. While doing this I got some slip on the rim and I just got rid of this by carefully going over it with my sponge and then I pressed the slip away and I just went over it a few more times with the sponge to get rid of all of the slip. Then I want to get rid of a little bit more clay at the bottom to make the shape a little bit more rounded so I just cut it away with the same wooden tool and then I went over it with a sponge to smooth it out and make it a nice and round shape. Since I will not be trimming this mini cup, I prefer to just make it as smooth as possible everywhere, all the way down to the bottom. And then at the end here was still a little bit slip on the bottom, so I just cut this away and also smooth it out with a sponge. And then what I like to do is use a heat gun to dry the cup. I just hold it quite closely and move it very slow. This is sped up so that you don't have to wait too long. And I just blow dry it until the rim as you can see here becomes lighter. This means that the clay is almost dry at the top and then I stop with the blow drying. I do this because this makes taking off the cup from the wheel easier. As you can see here I take my wire tool and I just put this around the cup and then I pull it towards myself. And I hold the cup with my other hand so that I can just carefully take it off without it falling. And then the cup is finished but it still needs a handle to become a mug. So that's what I will be doing now. For this I just take a little bit of clay since it's such a small mug you don't need a lot of clay to make the handle. And I roll this in between my hands and then I roll it even thinner on the table. I just go over it with my hands and my fingers very carefully and just make it as thin as possible. I like to move my fingers outwards and just press on some parts that might be a little bit thicker. And as you can see it becomes quite long. Of course you don't need this long of a piece but it's easier to just make it a little bit longer. And then when it has the thickness that I want I go over it very carefully with my finger and I just put a little bit of pressure on it to make it a bit flatter since most handles are flat instead of round. 
So that's why I'm doing this. And then I cut off the piece that I'm actually going to use. For this I pick a part that has the same thickness everywhere. It's all a little bit difficult to see because it's so small but I hope you understand what I'm doing. I just hold the cup in one hand and then I bend the handle into the shape that I like. I'm going for the most basic shape that the handle can have because it's already difficult enough to make it this small. As you can see here the handle is a little bit too big because I don't like the handle sticking out above the rim. So I decided to here pinch off a little bit of clay from the bottom of the handle. And then I held it next to it to see if it had the right size and it did so then I could go on with attaching it. To attach it I used my needle tool to make some scratches at the parts where I'm going to attach it. So as you can see I just very carefully scratched the clay a little bit. This will help to attach the handle to the cup. And then I take a brush with some vinegar in it. The vinegar will help to make the clay sticky and attach the handle easily. And then I go over it again with the needle tool to scratch it again. And then I take the handle very carefully and I press it on top of the part that I just scratched. And it's a bit hard to see because I had to hold the handle. But I just press it very carefully on top of it. And as you can see here it's quite easy to press on the bottom since that's on the outside. But the inside is a bit more difficult because the handle is too small to go with your finger in between it. So what I like to do is use my needle tool that I'm doing here. And as you can see I like roll it over the handle to press the handle onto the cup. And I do the same at the bottom. And then I smooth it out with the vinegar brush again. Make sure not to have too much vinegar on the brush otherwise the handle might fall off because it becomes too wet. So I just have a little bit of vinegar in there and carefully go over it to smooth it out. The handle had some little cracks because the clay is so small and dries very fast. So to get rid of these I went over it with the brush as well. And as you can see here the bottom has a little bit of a sharp edge because it was flat on top of the wheel. So to fix this I like to carefully go over it with a sponge to round it a little bit and just make it nice and smooth. And as you can see here it's quite round and nice. And then the mug is finished and ready to dry before biscuit fire. And then after it has been biscuit fired I glaze it. I decided to glaze it with the glaze Perry Twinkle from Stroke and Coats from Mako. But you can of course glaze your mugs with any glazes that you'd like. You could also use this glaze before the biscuit fire and that in that way you only have to fire it once. But because the handle is so fragile I prefer to biscuit fire it so that it is easier to glaze and the handle won't break that easily. And then I just glaze it like I glaze all of my pieces. I just take a little brush and start off on the inside. Then I glaze the handle and then I glaze the top part of the mug on the outside. Then I let the glaze dry so that I can hold it on the top. And then I glaze the bottom part of the mug. And I repeat this three times because I'm applying three coats. If you're using stroke and coats you can decide how many coats you want to apply yourself. I prefer to apply three coats because then you have just a nice thick even coat of glaze. But you could also apply one or two coats and then it will be a bit more transparent. But this will also mean that you might see the brush strokes which I am not a great fan of. So that's why I am applying three coats. And it's important to let the glaze dry in between coats. I always get a little bit of glaze on the bottom. This isn't a problem, I just get rid of this by twisting it on top of this wet piece of fabric. This way it's just easy to clean the bottom and get rid of any glaze that's on there. You don't want any glaze on the bottom of your pieces because otherwise they will melt in a kiln and get stuck to your kiln shelf. So this is an easy way to get rid of this and as you can see it's now nice and clean and ready to be glaze fired. And here are some pictures of the final result. I also glazed one mini mug with the Northern Light glazing combination. Here's a picture, I think it looks quite nice. And if you want to know how I do this glazing combination, I will leave a link down below. That was it for this video. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you liked it or learned something new from it. If so, please give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel if you haven't done it yet. And if you have made these mini mugs yourself and you're going to post them on Instagram, please tag me at Carlos because I would love to see them. I hope to see you in the next video. Bye!